Well hello and welcome back. Really great to see you all again. Uh, another episode of the Carnifex project which is rapidly drawing to a close now. Um, we've done the carapace, we've done the bodywork now, just the claws, the talons and a few bits and bobs to finish off. Uh, so today will all be about spiky bits, about talons, about claws, lots of going on. Um, so without further ado let's wander over to the table and um, start cracking on with doing some painting. Uh, that does seem a little disappointing actually. Um, I, I'm not normally like that, am I? Shall we uh, to the table? Well, here we are once more. Um, and I am so pleased about how this guy is really coming along now. Um, let's get on with cracking on with these talons. Uh, I'll show you my hive tyrant. Let me just reach over to pick him up. Um, so here's the hive tyrant theme. So these blades, um, to give us consistency, are going to have to blend through from green through to white again. That's what I'm aiming for. Um, I have done a little bit of a mixture uh, as I've been doing the models. Some of the models stay really, really green on the uh, spikes. Uh, some go quite white. Um, I think what I'm going to do is if we look, he's got some spines on his rib cage there in the middle of the chest. Uh, I think those are going to stay more green and then as we come onto the top surfaces the big blades are going to go the more brilliant white colour along with these slightly larger white mandible blades as well. Uh, we'll keep some consistency going there throughout our model scheme. So without further ado we better get some paint on the table. So just as a recap of the colours we're using we have Vallejo's Black, Vallejo's Game Colour Dark Green, Vallejo's uh, olive green, Vallejo's yellow green. Then we have in the back, the really bright one there is Pro Acryl Bright Ivory. And then we jump back to Vallejo again for the uh, bone white. I may actually add some brilliant white in as well later on, but to start with, we will um, stick with those colors. Now I've thought about normally the way I transition. So if we look at the other uh, model, and uh, the, the normally what I do is I paint the whole thing dark as we normally do. I go black, black, green, green, and slowly but surely add more and more colours on. And that seems quite laborious. But one of the things, um, not too much on this model, but it's when you look at the darker recesses, blending those in and giving them a more natural look, it tends to work a bit better. And I was toying with today going to a really bright white scheme and then blending backwards. But I've had a look at the model and actually with these long um, recesses here, I think to have them dark green and then blended through around them is going to be much easier to go from dark to pale and spend a bit of time than it is just to whack the white on and chuck washes over the top, which I don't think will give quite as good a, a feel to the model. So we'll, we'll go dark and come bright. So that's the first uh, thought process that I've gone through this morning. So we will grab a bit of black and dump an awful lot of dark green onto it. Um, as we have seen previously, if you've used these colours, the dark green really is dark. So adding black to it really does beef the colour up. Um, and when you apply it, it makes it not quite invisible to the naked eye. Um, oh my goodness, one thing I haven't done this morning. We have not prepared our tissue. Right, there we go, kitchen roll. Just give a brush a clean because I've just dumped an absolute ton of paint into it. There we go, that's better. One of the things to watch for um, when you're doing this, um, ever so easy uh, thing to do, is you put your water in the brush, you give the tip a wipe, and what you've got is like one or two little nodules of water sat up here, and as you're painting they roll down and then you get all over your model. So just a thing to keep an eye on. Um, I have I will admit I have on a couple of occasions been caught out by that error myself. So what we're going to do is I don't really want to go too much into these recesses. Um, so what I'm going to do is just gently stroke over the top of them. Don't really want to go too deep into them at all. Come down the blade and I think 
probably for consistency sake and ease of painting because the one thing that you will notice on your model is that the blade this side uh, very much has an edge it's not a, like a really fine point you do have to uh, take the colour around the corner if, as it were and um, so what I think I'll do is I will which needs a bit more water that's better what I do, will do is I will paint paint both sides of this blade and the one thing I've started to um, think about when I am um, painting these miniatures to show you is um, if you stick to one area too long what you tend to find is that as you do the next coat oh look there's that little water droplet I was talking about so I'll <laughs> make sure I, I don't make the error I told you all about um, the one thing I need to do is when I'm doing these videos is paint enough of an area that as we do the subsequent layers what we don't end up doing is actually pulling off the paint and that's mainly that's sort of my fault in trying to show you um, the technique in a short period of time but the more small of an area you work on the more um, impatient you are and want to get onto that next area uh, or next layer sorry you'll find that you will lift the paint off and it's just a, it is just about being a little bit patient I think I'm gonna to have to put my hand just behind the claw just to get a bit better focus for you okay I'll just make sure I run down the edge of the side as well using the edge of my brush so that's that piece done we'll move on to another little area and what I'll do is I'll do the first layer on the claws just the same uh, I will as I'm doing the claws I will strike this way starting to build up you know as I'm obsessed with texture um, and so what we'll do is build the stripes up because I want the claw to come in that way uh, on the upper surface I'll bring them this way um, just to get the texture in the in the direction that I want it running right from the beginning and what I will do is I'll get both sides of the claw done I'm also going to do this little talon on the top uh, if I get really carried away I may do both sides of the model I might even do these here as well and then I'll come back once they're complete Alright, so that first layer wasn't too painful a process, so I've actually been around every single spike I could find on the model. Guaranteed there'll be one hidden somewhere I've missed, but we'll come back to that later. And so the next bit is a bit arduous, and you can probably maybe just see there's a hint of green on those blades, but now what we're going to do is we're going to go from the black and green mix to the pure dark green. Um, and you're probably going to laugh when you see the finished product at how much of this is actually only left with this dark colour but we're going to now go over and just if you notice I'm now leaving a tiny gap between the recesses and where I paint green um, so what we're doing is anywhere that's meant to be dark we're now going to stay away from and we're just going to paint the dark green around those areas to give them a little bit more relief um, and so yeah it's just going to be that simple we're virtually giving full coverage again And the room I'm working in today is quite warm so the paints are drying fairly quick on application which is good for you um, just a little bit more awkward for me it just means I can get on with the model quicker um, but it just makes it that they're drying out a little bit quick for my liking and this again we're going to strike down and we are going to leave this back area here black so I'm just drawing in some lines 
any dinks in the blade we will try to leave as dark as possible to uh, exaggerate those. So you can see I'm leaving quite a big, big line. Where there's some relief in here, I'm just coming back up to that, just so I can apply a bit of colour later to exaggerate it. Um, the top of the claw is going to be very much like the other areas, so we can run areas on where I think I'm going to hit with the shade. I probably will leave the claw a lot darker than the main carapace area, just that it looks so different. And then especially when we come to the tip where it's going to be white and the edges where it's going to be white, it really will stand out. So I'm just going to work around the model with this dark green now. And then at the end of that, you're probably going to say, well, I can't really tell the difference, but actually that level of blending will really, well, as you can see on the rest of the model, how it just really nicely blends through and it just really pops the model when you go to the brighter colours. So uh, trust me, we are going to get there and it will look okay. So already I've um, started to realise that even in these dark colours, and uh, you probably can't see a oh, there's a little hint of green going on there, um, but I've already started to make calls on light placement in my head at this point, and I thought I'd just go through that with you. So uh, on the claw, for example, I've decided that already this area here went dominantly green. I left a bit of an area here where I br brought the paint away from the area, so that area is going to stay darker. This area here is going to stay darker, and I've brought the colour more and more towards the tip, so the tips are going to end up paler at the end. I've concentrated the colour on this back edge here where the light would strike, and then down the blade and at the tip, where again it's going to be pale. Drawn down these um, towards the ends where it's going to be pale along the edge and down towards the ends, again on all the spikes. The main um, blades themselves, I've drawn down the edge and then slowly but surely there's more colour saturation in the tips of the blade than there is at the base. Um, and that's a theme that's all the way around and that's already at this dark phase. So I just wanted to share that with you before we move on to the next phase. So now we're starting to get to the a more exciting piece where we get a bit more colour application. Now we're going to have to go quite gently with the blending, so um, I think although I've laid the paints out ready just to show you earlier, I think I'm actually going to start again because they have been on the palette quite a while. So we'll get some green. I know, terrible waste. But it'll be drying out and it won't apply well, so let's, uh, let's not make a mess of the model. Okay. And I'm going to need quite a lot of the paint, so let's get quite a bit mixed already. And again, you'll see as I'm painting, that thought process is already going in my head about where we're headed with the colours. And I think I'm also going to clean uh, the brush. So what I've got is I do have some blush cleaning, so cleaning uh, soap. This one particularly is by Artis Opus. I also do have just for um, no bias, uh, there's also uh, the Master's Brush Cleaner, that's available on Amazon. Um, all of them work equally well, but if you can see the, the brush does look a little tinge green, and it's going to stay tinge green because I'm going to be working with green for a while, but especially when I come to the white layers, I will be looking at cleaning the brush and purging it so that I don't end up with any tint of colour. Um, it may be, as I do the initial layers, actually quite useful to have that little tint of colour in there because it will help blend. But um, just showing you what I do every now and again, just to clean the brush and stop the paint build up in the brush. Um, not that these are particularly expensive brushes, these are just from um, a general art store. Um, I think they work out about 45, 50p each, something like that. So they're not expensive, um, but you, and you can do good work with um, fairly cheap. Oh my goodness, that is dry. Let's get a bit of water in there. And maybe a bit more. We'll pop a blob of water over here and then carry it over. Because that is looking quite dry already. That's better. Okay. 
clean the brush, wipe off the excess water. Now we've made sure the paint's mobile. Okay, and now we'll, again, we're thinking about where the colour's going to be. So uh, definitely going to have some strong colours going on towards the tip. So we will, again, the stripes are there, giving that texture. And I think colour, we're going to pop into this last section here and then draw it down and less and less the further away we get just random lengths you don't need to this doesn't need to be a smooth um, equal layer I'm actually trying to create some level of um, in your head it, what I'm thinking is that this is organic and I'm trying to create that level um, of organic look to the creature so a, a, a sort of smooth transition is going to make it look more like it's a town model than a, um, a Tyranid model so it needs to be just a bit erratic and then a little bit higher up there with the the colours and I think that's probably as about as high as I'm going to go with the colours so if you look I have the first layer I've gone a little bit deeper in where there's not a lot of colour and then as I hit with a bit more colour I've come onto a lesser portion of the blade and after two or three layers you start to build up even without changing colour you start to build up a little bit of a transition, just emphasize those little holes up there. Okay, gonna do the same on here. Now, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna have to have a really quite a smooth brush, so we'll get rid of all the paint on the brush. Just the tip in, a bit of water, because I want a really nice fine tip so that I can get a smooth application here. And we're going to gently, not much colour at the top here, we'll drag the colour away, but we're trying to give that line on the edge of the blade. And then as we come towards the tip, we're going to have a lot more colour. And what we will do is we'll go around the corner and repeat that on the other side. So start your colour at the tip so you get most of it off the brush. And then as you lose colour, I'll, the middle of the blade will come a little bit higher up as well. Uh, um, of the claw will come a little bit higher up. And we'll stroke that colour on. And then we'll have a look around the corner. And this is where model making you regret the poses you put the the model in because you realize that how hard you've made it for yourself to paint and then on the inside of the blade which is going to be even harder we're going to try and get those stripes up the blade again The fortunate thing is on the inside of the blade, there's a lot more shadow. So we're not going to have to go to, apart from the tip where it's got to be bright to give that continuity. Um, we're not going to have to be quite as accurate and um, place as much color on the inside. And then on the back of the claw, where there is a little bit of a ridge, we'll make sure we do give a hit of color and just try and avoid any dinks and divots in there so that we do give that sorry about that I'll just go over that again any dinks and divots in there we leave just work around them so now we can start to see the colour starting to form we'll give a few more layers on this tip here where it looks a bit light in colour And we'll decide how far up the claw we want to proceed with that. So I'm going to go quite high. And I 
think will have an, where the light would hit. I'm just going to have a little area up here that's a bit greener as well, where I can put a little bit of shading in. And we'll work that colour all the way around both sides. And then we'll move on to the talons. Similar thought process going on is how far do I want the, the colour to be. So I think we're definitely going to come at the tip here. So nice and gentle down the edge there. And we are coming on to the blade. And then I'm going to come from probably here starts to alter the colours. Done exactly what I didn't want to do there. I've actually dumped colour into the recess, so we'll get rid of that. Okay. Need to be a little bit more careful as I do the next few layers because I really don't want much colour in that recess at all. It's all work around it. And you'll notice that when the paint goes on it's quite bright to start with and then after moments it starts to dull off and that is because we are layering the previous layer is wet and the two are working in together so um, that is part of this technique, that is what we're trying to achieve. So it's not a, a, a bad thing, it's a, it's a good thing, it's helping us. That area's just got a little bit too dry there, you can see the paint struggling to go on. So I'll just backstroke across it might even leave it and come back to it to be honest this paint's actually drying out in this room quite quickly i'm gonna to have to get more water on here Then if you see, I just went to the back of the blade to apply some paint. And that's starting to look a nice colour transition. So I'm going to work my way around the rest of the model. So we are really starting to move on a little bit now. So um, on to the next layer, which is going to be the olive green. Bring that over here. Oh, that's drying out a lot. We'll get a bit of water into there. So you can salvage the paint. Clean the brush. And <coughs> excuse me. Okay. So now placement's getting a little bit more important. Um, and we've got to decide on how much we highlight where. So I need a real in fact, I'm going to swap brushes, just try and get a little bit more of a finer point. And, right, we'll just try and catch the bottom edge of this recess and this one. Okay, 
and then we'll bring the colour up from the tip. Sorry. Maybe if I do that as I'm painting, just to make life even more interesting. I'm quite sure I'm going to get this in focus for you because it wants to focus on the head. Let's Right, okay. Then we'll get a little bit more of the darker green and we'll try and transition the two edges together. So at the moment it's looking a bit of a mess, but we will work on it. So I've dropped back to the, the dark green, just to catch this higher border and dr drive that back into a darker color. And then we'll get back to the mid-tone really struggling with focus at the moment on this fine blade let's just drop away a bit there So it's starting to get together now. Now we'll go back to the paler colour. gentle strokes blending it together and that's looking much more of a smoother finish now and then we'll go work in back on the edge again with the pale colour try and catch all of this tip what, what I might be wise doing here is um, I might be wise just being a little bit patient and letting some of this dry actually or else it's going to end up really blotchy 
because I've got dry, quite a lot of dry paint here. So I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, and then come back once it's had a chance to just dry up a little bit. He said, carrying on and making a mess of it. Right, okay. So we're gonna leave that to dry and then we'll come back once it's had a little bit of a chance to dry and we'll work on the next layer. Well, my friends, after some serious um, backwards and forwards with the colors and Blending, the claws are done, the spikes all over him are done, as well as the two big siding talons. Um, so now on to the next layer. I'm just going to turn the lights up a little bit. Okay, and we'll bring that light in as well, that's a bit better. Right, so now to the one of the final stages, we're nearly starting to conclude. Uh, and we're going to go to the yellow green. And I've reset my palette, re um, hydrated it because I'm not sure if that wasn't part of the problem of the paints drying out. We shall see. Um, I'm not sure if my olive green is about on its last legs and maybe is getting a bit dry and needs throwing out. But um, we shall persevere. Now we're past the olive green now, so we're on to towards the final layer so we'll get a nice thin layer slowly getting thicker and thicker towards the tip okay I'll just do that again on the other one. I'm not sure if I actually had that in focus. Well, I'm not in focus, but in shot when I was doing that. Um, okay, there we go. So we'll thin layer. Broadening out to the tip. And I've gone from one extreme to the other where the um, the olive green was quite a dry paint and this yellow green has got lots of hydration in it so a bit easier to work with. Okay, so that's the scything talons next layer on. Just go a little bit brighter here. That's better. And then what we'll do is we'll just run some highlights on the very tips of like the, the spiky bits, get the edges here into that bright yellow zone as well, ready for the next phase. And then on the tops of the talons, um, again, bright yellow at the tips. And anything in the bodywork as well. Just a, starting to pick the colours up towards the tips. I get a nice little wedge of colour in there because we've got to, we've got to go to white don't forget so we've got to leave ourselves some room and then the talons uh, sorry talons claws 
So towards the inner side, we're just now going to just little stripes. And then as we get towards the edge, we're going to deliver more colour. Because as I keep telling you, we've got to get white on here yet. And I want a, a reasonably significant portion to be white. So right at the tippy will really go to town. <clears throat> so you can see on the edge here where the light would strike, I've decided to so we'll just go down the middle and just give it a little bit of a highlight. I've decided to go to the edge and then say the the reflection wouldn't carry on because sorry the reflection wouldn't carry on it wouldn't get around the corner so it stops abruptly there and then around the corner we do need to go lighter whether we like it or not because actually it's going to be white around here as well so we've got to bring that color up um, and I'll work my way around the model in preparation for putting that white on so we've now got the bright highlights on and now we need to turn the tips of those blades more white so we'll, we'll go is we'll go to the bone white and um, we'll mix a little bit of the green in with the bone white and then this is really aimed mainly at the claws um, and the scything talons and a little bit maybe on some of the highlights of the spikes but not a great deal so Start off a, a real thin edge, but we're soon going to introduce it onto the blade and then get more dominant as we go towards the tip. Okay, and then for the small blades, just a little run down the edge. And for the claws, let's make sure the brush is nice and moist. And then just to start with, just little lines. On the claw and then just like we did with the side and talon as we get towards the end we go a bit heavier and back on the edges brighten them up Let me just dim that light because I think I'm getting a bit too much reflection there. There you can see that's looking a lot paler now. And then on that shadow on the front of the claw, we'll just pop tiny, tiny. A 
and then on the front of the claw underneath right in the middle wants to be nice and bold and then we draw the paint away to the tip thinning it out as we go and blending it in with the previous layer and then it's just a case of working around the upper parts of the model and just getting that all finished and then we're getting ready for bone white we're we'll back in a few seconds once I've had a chance to get that done so now the tips are verging on that white color uh, we've now got pro acryl uh, bright ivory on the palette and I think if I keep it nice and thin and just transition the layers slowly we should get a nice finish to this so we'll sweep down, I'm using the edge of the brush here, a bit heavy with a claw there, get rid of that, start again. Right. The, uh, this is a really good coverage, as in the uh, pigment's heavy um, with this colour. Um, but it is a nice thin paint to work with at the same time. So let's see if putting my hand in behind there gives us a good focus and this is just nice gentle strokes and then as we come up this edge we'll drop to the side again And I think you can see that that's coming on lovely. And we'll just go a bit more with the bright ivory at the tip. Bring it back into the blade a little bit. And that's looking pretty vibrant. Might even just give it another layer. And then I'm going to repeat that on the claws. I'll just do the claws for you so you can actually see them being done um, and see where I'm focusing. So go from about here gently down. Don't know if I actually have that image for you. I'll just do the other side just so you can see that again. Sorry about that if I had it out of image. I'll be able to see on the replay when I go back to it. Come to the tip. You see that colour is popping lovely now. I'll get my hand in just behind there to give it a bit of sharper focus for you. And we're going to repeat that on all the other really sharper bits and I'll come back and show you the finished process. 
Okay, so that's all the white applied. And I think he is looking a very nice piece indeed. And when you look at the rest of the army's um, colour scheme, sort of the, so bring in the Hive Tyrant. Um, oh, the colour schemes are blending nicely together. Um, and I think one of the ideas I had was that the more senior the ranking, the more white there would be on the blades. Don't know if I'll actually end up carrying that through because it may just be that I need the effect um, on some models in the army. So I might just go all out white on some of the weapons, but um, that was an idea I had in my head. But I'm very pleased with how this has come out. I'm really pleased how the colours are all blending together. Um, in the next video, we're going to do the tail, the base, um, finish off the uh, barnacles on the top, and then. I think this on oh, the hooves and then this big bad boy is done so I think maybe one more video well I am really pleased with how the miniatures coming along so far uh, only a few more little bits left to do and then I think the beast is going to be complete so I think maybe one more kind of project video and we're done uh, and then he will be ready for the battlefield so um, really looking forward to that uh, maybe we'll have to do some sort of battle report maybe in the future uh, I and my friends do play. Um, I hope you're enjoying the content, hope you're enjoying the hints and tips. Um, if you are, please do like and subscribe, really does help the channel. Um, and in the meantime, only one thing left to say. Are we painting minis yet? Hell yeah! And I'll catch you hopefully in this final video. See you soon.